Okay, so let's look at the ciphers and fundamentals lab. So I've got my lab sheet here, and what you can do is you can print out the lab sheet and fill it in, or you could you could uh, fill it in online with a PDF. Okay, so before we get started, I'll just show you the environment that uh, I'm going to use. And in this case, I'm going to use a Kali instance. You'll find that uh, we'll be using uh, Python and some JavaScript uh, later on. So the most reliable platform for Python is uh, Linux. So we'll use Linux Kali. We'll also be using some tools later on for other labs that will use uh, Kali. So we'll just power it on uh, just now. And then what we'll do is we'll just open it up and we'll get started on, on, the, on the lab. Okay, so that's it powered in. So what I have to do now is to make sure that uh, I start it with the remote console here. So this will allow me to be able to copy and paste from my uh, desktop here onto Kali Linux. So you can use your Mac or you can use Windows, but uh, it, it doesn't really matter. But this uh, Kali instance here should have most of the libraries installed that we actually need in most of the tools. So I just let that start and we'll come back to it a little bit later. Okay, so there's a page also that you can use to copy and paste from the code that you have uh, within the lab. So make sure you can open up that page or you can copy and paste from the, the actual lab sheet. Okay, so let's, let's get started. So what we'll look at is some basic formatting uh, methods. Uh, base64, hexadecimal, and then use the modulus operator and a few other of the, the, the bitwise operators that we use, such as and or XOR, rotate left and rotate light right. And we'll just introduce uh, a few of the basic concepts uh, around uh, using a Python that can be used in the other labs. Okay, so we'll just get started. And the first one is, is whether these are prime numbers. So this just involves uh, opening up a web page and testing if the values are prime. So the first one I have here is 91. So let's try 91. And 91 isn't a prime. Okay, and then we'll try 421. 421. And 421 is a prime number. 1449 isn't a prime number. Okay, as we'll find out, prime numbers are very important for us with inside public key encryption. The next concept that we come across is what's called the greatest common uh, denominator. That's the value that they, that uh, will uh, the largest value that will divide into both the numbers that we actually have. So we'll just power this one up. So the values that we have are 88 and 46. We can see already 2 is, is a factor in there. And 2 is the greatest factor. The Python code that we're using is just this code here. Now let's try 105 and 35. And with this, we get uh, 35 is the greatest, which means that there are no lower numbers that, uh, uh, so 35 is a factor of 105 there. Next, we'll look at uh, some different formats for our our data elements. Computers obviously understand binary, but we need other ways to represent uh, characters and 
other things like that. So we'll just get this here, copy link address, and then we'll paste it in here. Okay, so the task is to find the base64 and the hexadecimal values uh, for the following. So I will try hello here. And this is the base64 here. We'll see the equal sign sometimes at the end there. We'll try, and there's the hexadecimal equivalent. These are all the characters. So each of these is one character. That's a capital H. And now we'll try hello. And we see here there's the base64. There's the hex has changed now. And then finally we'll try this one. And there's the base64 that we have. Here's our hex characters. Now what we'll do is we'll enter our base64 value. So it's B, G, let's see if we can get it from our sheet. And it says Lloyd's. Now we'll get a hexadecimal value. And we'll paste the hex in here. And we get Napier. And then finally, we'll take a binary value. And we'll paste that in. See if it accepts it without uh, the spaces. That's fine. So that's anchor one to three. So you can look up a table and to be able to see um, uh, to see these why these conversions actually uh, work the way they do. Okay, so now we can start on our Python. So let's log in here. So we're just going to do a, some simple Python using the, the mod operator. So we'll just get started up. Uh, you can do this on your on your Mac. So I'll just show you on my Mac. We're doing some Python. So print uh, five three four three one mod four five three. Okay, I'm using Python 2.7 uh, in these examples. Uh, Python 3 is similar, but you need to put the brackets around, the parentheses around the parts of the print statement. Okay, so there's the answer there. But I'll use Kali here to be able to illustrate these examples. So I've made myself a folder called eSecurity. And I won't create a file yet, but uh, we'll just run Python. So we see we're on Python 2.713 here. So we'll print uh, 5, 3, 4, 3, 1, mod 453. That's 430. So the answer to that is 430. Now we'll do some of these operations. So these operations are bitwise operations. So in, in encryption and crypto, we typically operate down at a, at a bit level with simple operations. So let's try these out. Okay, so the first one is a bitwise OR. So it takes each of the bits together and then does a, a bitwise OR operation. This one here is an AND. And this one here is an exclusive OR. 
It is the exclusive OR that we typically use with inside crypto. And with this, we have 0, 0 gives us 0, 0, 1 gives us 1, 1, 0 gives us a 1, and 1, 1 gives us a 0. OK, we can lay these out, uh, so 43 hex is that, and we're XORing it with 21, that's a 2, and a 1. So we can see here that a 1 and a 1 will give us 0, a 1, a z 1 and a 0 will give us 1, and so on. So that's our basic operations that we have for our bitwise operators. Uh, so it's a good idea to do these pen and paper and just make sure that they, they all work. Next, what we'll do is that we'll have a look at uh, some of our conversions. So we have a decimal value that we can represent for characters and we can convert them into binary, hex, octal and so on. So we'll do that with inside Python. Okay, let's uh, make it get the get the value right. Uh, so we have a value of ninety three, and now what we do is we'll convert it into a binary with the bin uh, function hex. 5D, octo, and as a character, that's the square bracket. Okay, so now let's do the base64 conversion. So for this, again, we've got Python, import base64, and then our string is crypto. And then we'll just print that out, b64 dot b64 code. And there's the result there. Okay, so we should be able to compare that back with our little program and make sure that what we have there is, is correct. So for our next program, we're going to perform a bit shift. Okay, so with this, the bits shift either to the left or to the right, and the bits will fall off the end as we as we shift them. So we'll try this little program here. And what we'll do to save time this time is that we'll actually create a Python file. So we'll use nano, and we'll call it shift.py, and we'll paste that in. Okay, so in this case, what what will happen is that if we put in, if we don't put a, an argument after the uh, the Python program, then it'll take this as our input. Otherwise, it'll take the first value that we put in as a binary value. So we'll Control X, save yes. There we are. So we'll run the program. check that it works. 
So the first thing that we do is that we'll take uh, a value of 41. And so we would have to convert it into uh, 41 to be able to uh, add that. So if you get your value and then hopefully Uh, we should be able to do that. Okay, so get your value of 41 and then uh, you should be able to do your shifts. So for our next one, we want to find the factors of 4, 3, 2. And the factors are 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 times 3. Okay, so we take a value back to its prime numbers and every value is, is multiplied. can be broken up into factors which are prime numbers. Next one we'll do is, is our GCD. So we're going to create a little Python program to do a GCD calculation for us. And the, so it's a simple one here. And we'll call it GCD. We'll paste that in. And the first value we must calculate is 4105 and 10. Control X, save yes, Python GCD, and it's 5. Okay, so we can go back and and do the next one, which is four, five, three, nine, and six. And that's three. Okay, so for the section C, we can now look at this operation here. So, so you, you can create a little program if you want, so we'll do uh, So we'll make the message equal to 12, the exponent equal to 23, and our prime number equal to 973. So we'll print m to the power of e mod p. And the answer is 514. So we'll try another one. This time our message is 8, 5, and 2, 6, 9. 
to one line. Okay, so for the next part, we've got, we can enter different values in and it should work. Okay, so as a rough approximation, uh, the values 6 times k, uh, that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, give us our, our prime numbers. So we'll write a very simple Python program to be able to print the prime numbers up to uh, 100. Uh, so here's my attempt. So we're just printing out uh, i is equal to 1, 2, 3, and so on. And then when we get to greater than 100, then we'll actually break. Okay, so let's see what that gives us. And those are the prime numbers. Uh, we've went over the 100 there. And if we want, we can put in a comma here and it will stop it from taking a new line. And if we put in our break in here, then that should, our increment in here, that should improve things a little bit. Okay, so there's uh, the values 7, 5, 11, 13, and so on, is, is one rough approximation for our prime numbers. So we can then uh, do that up to 1,000, just by changing this part here. And there we are. Okay, so we can also use what's called a prime, a prime sieve. And with this, we can create a, a method to search, to quickly search for, for prime numbers. So we'll just give that a try. In this case, this will print the number of prime numbers up to 1,000. As we'll find, prime numbers are very important for public key encryption. And there they are, look very similar to, to what they were before. And because we've actually created an argument in here, we can just put in a value like that. And that gives us our prime numbers up to 5,000. Okay, so you can try the Rabin, uh, the Miller Rabin test for prime numbers. Uh, and we should be able to get that from here.
Okay, let's try running this program then. So this is a, a, a quick, quick way of um, of creating uh, a prime number test. We check that we have the right code there. And finally, we'll implement a very basic prime number generator, a very basic random number generator. So again, the code should be here. And these examples are really just there to get you used to using uh, Python. Okay, and random numbers are extremely important with inside uh, cryptography uh, because we use things like uh, key generation to go to create a random key which hopefully shouldn't be able to be guessed. So we'll try our code here. Okay, so this has generated some random uh, values for us here. So in the next part of the tutorial, you can try in different values for a seed number and uh, for different ranges. Okay.